Today on Critics Talk, we're talking about the 2019 Oscar nominations. We're talking about the Fire Music Festival documentaries on Hulu and Netflix. And Frank Castle returns, and we got the season two of Punisher full review. Stay tuned. Welcome to Critics Talk, episode 4666. I am back, Miguel, <laughs> alongside with the one and only Clep. What's good? What's good? What's good? Yo, Clep. Yo. How you doing, brother? I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. The you critics know, as always, as are always. back with another dope ass episode. Yeah, I, I want to give it. I want. I want to apologize to the critics out there for yeah. the last episode. We had a little bit of technical technical difficulties, uh, but we back with a vengeance, and, and and hopefully this one. Uh, Suit you just fine. Yeah, man, we're trying to work through it. You know, it's not always gonna be perfect, Clef, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we we strive to make make the deliveries on these things. You know, we are not trying to keep you guys waiting too long. Well, yeah, yeah, we're here. Yo, Clef, have you you've been watching stuff this week? What you've been consuming when it comes oh, to this man. media? I was bro. just like catching up on one of my favorite shows. I do uh, How to Get Away with Murder this time of year. Ooh, nice. Uh, it came back uh, about two weeks ago, and I tell you, man, like. They're five seasons in, and this thing hasn't dropped the ball yet. My, my, I'm excited. Like, I've never done this before, but I'm really excited for when the show completely ends. Why? Are they, like, planning that already? No, they're not. And I'm like, because it's just, like, the hole just keeps getting bigger and bigger. These people, like, the characters in the show, shit is just hitting the fan all the time. And it's to the point where I'm just like, how does this whole thing wrap up? Like, like anyone that watches How to Get Away with Murder, they know what I'm talking about. Like, you guys have watched season after season. We're on season five, and every season, there's always a major death. Someone's always linked. One of the main characters is always linked some way, somehow. And it's just like, eventually, all this shit is going to catch up to them. Yeah. And I'm just wondering how, who knows if it's going to be seven, six, eight, nine, ten seasons. I'm just going to, I'm front row when this thing has its final season. Yo, whatever happened with the... With the crossovers they did with Scandal, they, like, it worked. Did any of that like still like affect how to get away with murder? Yeah, so I think uh, f for the most part, I feel like it was more or less for how to get away with murder. It didn't really do much for Scandal, but it was a good crossover. Uh, I think it was like two episodes. Yeah, two episodes, and it, it worked really well. It was very necessary um, when it when it was happening. I was I was front row for that. It was it was amazing, and I don't even watch Scandal. Yeah. So I wasn't really a Scandal fan, but it did make me tune in just so I could see what was really going to go on. That's cool, Clep. Yeah. Me personally, bro, I've been catching up on, on some some of my sci-fi shows. You know, I just finished the la latest season of Van Helsing. Um, I also watched this dope movie on Netflix called Polar, starring oh, Mad yeah. Milkerson and Vanessa Hudgens. That was pretty dope. You know, yo, Netflix stay putting out the original content. Um, I'm really, uh, yo, this movie was pretty interesting, Clap. Like, it was um, very visually stimulating type mm -hmm. of film, you know? I mean, it, it wasn't perfect by no means, but as far as, like, visually, there's not a lot of things like it. Give me a little bit of the premise. Okay, okay. So, uh, Matt Milkinson plays this, this killer. He's a hitman. Mm -hmm. um, he works for this company who hires these hitmen, you know? They, they set up these hits for him. Uh, but, so they what they do is they, they have like a very corporate type of structure mm -hmm. and they have like a 401k type of situation where these killers, <laughs> you know, they put some money away. And uh, one of the policies for the company is when they reach the age of 50, they need to retire. OK. Right. So alone, when they retire, there's going to be a huge paycheck that comes along with them. Guess what? The company doesn't want to pay. So they 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 bring some of the younger killers to kill the old killers. <laughs> you know what I mean? But what they don't know is that this guy. Matt Melkerson, aka the Black Kaiser in the movie. The Black Kaiser. He's dope, bro. Uh, bro, he's you know he he's one of those characters that he's hard to kill. You know he's Bruce Willis and and Die Hard. You know like you may try to kill him, bro, but good luck with that. Now this is the guy from uh, Doctor Strange, played Cassilius. Yeah, he plays Cassilius. He played Doctor Hannibal Lecter in the latest iteration ah, of the okay. TV show. Yeah. He's soon to be in the video game by Kojima Productions. Him and Norman Reedus. You know what I mean? Death okay. Stranding coming soon. Okay. I'm looking forward to that. But yo, Matt's yo, Matt's put in an uh, amazing performance in this, and maybe that's like one of the biggest. Uh, uh, negative things about the movies because like he's so good yeah. that everybody else just like fails to compare. Oh shit! 
Yeah, bro. But like the movie itself is like an action movie. It has a lot going on. Vanessa Hudgens is in there, but she's like very um, toned down. You know what I mean? Now you said this is on sci-fi or Netflix? This is on Netflix. Okay. It's a Netflix original. Netflix. It just came out last Friday. So it's fresh, you know. Um, I highly recommend it, you know. If I had to give it a rating, Club, yeah, yeah, go ahead. solid three X's. Watchable. It definitely. For a Netflix original, solid three X's. The and marketing like, looks great. The, yo, it's a very visual movie, Club. Yo, right away from this, from the get-go, you know, we get a little cameo. I don't want to spoil it. It's nobody huge, so I don't okay. want you guys to get, like, too too excited for that but like it starts very interesting and the movie doesn't let up i mean i'm a comic book lover so i might have to check this out this is a dark horse comic anyways so, is it yeah it's a dark horse comic for all you comic book lovers you definitely want to check this out because you must you must know about polar uh so i'm yeah, gonna check it out for sure brother and like it, it, it now it makes sense because it's a very colorful and yeah. this is the thing like mads is such a cool character mm -hmm. and the rest of the characters around him are too but the thing is, is like we don't spend enough time with them to like get why they're so weird and mm -hmm. like why they're so interesting looking. So I wish they would have been more done with that. Uh, but other than that, the movie itself is, you know, it's a solid action flip. Now, do you think this would have worked better as a TV series or as good as a one shot film? Uh, maybe as a limited series, maybe if it's only six episodes, yes. Yeah. But as a long running, no, no. I wouldn't want to see 10 or 13 episodes of this. This is fine the way it's, it is. It looks dark. It looks pretty dark. It's very dark. And uh, like I said, you know, the Black Kaiser, it's, it's such a dope character. They definitely dumbed down Vanessa. Oh, so much. She's like this Ooh. beautiful girl. And like, she looks super regular in it. So this so. looks like gaining a little weight for this. Oh, shit. Clef's getting excited. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's I, what we're, I like. We're, we're, when we do these talks, we, we sometimes watch the, the trailer. I'm watching the trailer. She looks really different. This is not High School Musical Vanessa Hudgens. No, no, no. She's way older. Yeah. Um, but, Clef, what do you think? You think you, you want to watch this? Yeah, I absolutely. highly recommend it to yeah, the Yeah, absolutely. Itself, it yeah. looks good. It looks action-packed. It looks good. Yeah, man, for sure. Yeah, Polar, Netflix, watch it. Check it out. Yo, Clep, mm -hmm. let's keep talking Netflix, bro, because these dudes is out here making moves, making, making, always, making moves. As always. Yo, remember the, the Resident Evil film franchise mm -hmm. starting Mila Djoko Djokovic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, I guess those films are done these days. Thank God. I was kind of over it. Yeah. I mean, she's moved on. Now she's adapting Monster Hunter, which is another video game property, but... Listen, Resident Evil ain't dead yet. You know, this this week, uh, the remake for Resident Evil 2 just came out for PS4 and Xbox, which was amazing, by the way. I yep. played the demo, bro. Mm -hmm. Woo! Talk about intense and scary. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. It just knows how to set the mood. But what I'm trying to get is Netflix is developing their own Resident Evil TV show. I mean, content is content. There's, a, there's, a, there's an audience out there somewhere. Hey, man, listen. Just because Walking Dead is falling off with the zombies <laughs> doesn't mean that Netflix doesn't want its own part of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I was never really a fan of, like, the whole Resident Evil series. I remember the game when it first came out, and it was, like, really, like, the first horror game of its type. Yeah. Back in the day, like, the whole... Um, What's that, that? Survival view? horror. Well, not even that. Like that that view. What is that view when you like kind of like third person one, action? Yeah, like behind. POV, POV. Yeah, yeah. Um, that kind of thing. So back then, it, it kind of was like a big deal. But Absolutely. then after a while, when you know movies came out, the first one was decent, and they made the sequel. Then they just kept burning it just and got burning. Crazy, yeah. yeah, after a while, it's just kind of eh. And so. It, is it gonna do you have any info like is it gonna follow the same character or are they gonna reboot and do a show or is it just gonna be a whole totally different thing clip i don't know or maybe they'll follow closely the truth, to the new game but see that's the thing it's because like there's been so many stories like there's like the long overarching storyline throughout resident evil mm -hmm. about like the t-virus and all that that like follows the umbrella corporation yeah and like we've seen a lot of that in the movies and they actually even managed to like fold in some of the video game characters into uh, the movie franchise mm -hmm. although they never really been the focus right it's always been about Mila Djokovic's Alice character which she's not really in the video game so I would personally what I would like to see is maybe they follow Leon Kennedy which is like one of the main characters in the video game series or maybe even Chris from the, from the team stars or whatever from the first uh, Resident Evil I don't know bro yeah. what they want to do but um, 
I would hope that they try to get away from like the Umbrella Corporation. Like, I don't want to see that, honestly. I don't, I don't want them to explain the outbreak. I want them to just maybe do little tiny stories in that universe. Six, six films. Yeah, they made plenty of them, brother. A lot of them. And, like, I don't get it because none of them, uh, uh, they weren't great. They, were, they weren't great, but they kept making money. And we know in this industry, if you make the money, you make a sequel. That's right. It doesn't even have to be good. It just has to make money, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Clep, um, Netflix, like I said, still out here making moves, bro. Their latest, it's a Jason Bateman, oh. John Cena, Mr. You Can't See Me team up. Jason Bateman is going to be directing Mr. You Can't See Me. And a action comedy from Netflix, bro. That, that I'm all, sign me up. I'm all, I'm all ready for that, man. Like, listen, I like Bateman and what he's been up to and what he's what he's been doing. I said to you earlier that I feel like he's had the greatest comeback in a long time of people from the '80s. Yes. Uh, but then you reminded me that he's always had the Arrested Development thing going. Yes. But to me, I'm not a huge Arrested Development fan, so he's been out of sight, out of mind until mm -hmm. so the breakup with Vince Vaughn and Jennifer Aniston. Great movie. And then ever since then, I've just been following this guy, and I just. I just feel like he's had the greatest comeback of, of 80s celebrities who, who you know. Jason Bateman? <laughs> nah, I'm about to do the soldier, you boy. Know. Jason who? Jason Bateman? Greatest comeback? No. The, <laughs> the guy from Family Ties? The, the, guy from, the guy from Team Wolf 2? Jason Bateman? Yeah, man. Nah, I, I, I admire his work. I admire his comedy style. I admire... He's even, you know, directed some episodes of Ozark. Yeah, He's, man. He's, like, been a big part of that machine, um, and I can't wait for season they three. They like him over there, huh? Yo, he, he's great. I think what he does is great. Even Game Night. I thought Game Night was a very decent movie. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it was kind of, you know, it was what it was. It, and I, I think he carries that entire film. All right, I got news for you, Clep. What, what? He's teaming up with the writer of Game Night. So this, for, the, for, this, for this film, yeah. yeah I'm all for it. It's them three, the... the the writer, him, and uh, and John Cena, bro. I am all for it. And, like, you seen John Cena in the latest Bumblebee, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. How, how did he do on that? Like, you <laughs> see him carrying its own, his, a film, like, by himself? And you know what? That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, like, that movie didn't do him any justice. Yeah. But he can, he can do it. Yeah. He just has to find the right thing. Listen, if you watched him in Blockers, you know he's got the comedy. Oh chops. yeah, Blockers was awesome. Block Blockers was probably the best thing he's done in a while. Yeah. Um, since uh, what was it? Sisters. I thought he was awesome Sisters. in Sisters. I don't think I've watched With, Sisters. Um, the, the, the oh SNL. yes, yeah, he, he played was the drug dealer. Yes, he played bro. the drug dealer. Yeah, he, oh, was, he was hilarious, hilarious in that. Yeah. So I I think I think he can do it. He just needs to find the right thing. Bro, Cena, he's he's. He's trying to make it big in Hollywood, and he I think he's making the right choices for himself. So Yeah. And you know he's got that Jackie Chan movie coming out soon. Jackie Chan? Yeah, he's got a Jackie Chan movie coming out um, pretty soon, actually. I forget the names, like Project something, you know. What, you know oh, okay. How they do out okay, there. that's cool. But, uh, yeah, bro, like he's just out here trying to make strides in Hollywood, and, and I think he's making the right moves, and I can't wait to watch what you know him and Jason Bateman can bring together to Netflix. Yeah, that's going to be great. Talking about Netflix Club, mm -hmm. Punisher Season 2, brother. Woo, I know Castle. you finished it because, you know, you bought that life. <laughs> I'm a few episodes in. I'm not even going to lie. I'm about four episodes. Um, I like what I've been seeing so far, man. It wasn't hard to, go, to finish this, actually. Like, I felt like this season really flowed well. It was a lot of action. It didn't. There was some, you know, it, it always gets a little dry in the middle because of story or whatever. But for the most part, it really feels like a '90s revenge plot or like guy in the wrong place, wrong time yeah. type of scenario. You know, he's, he's he's saving this girl, this random girl he doesn't know. It's straight out of the '90s, like the 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 plot, and it works. Um, my only concern with it was I, I wasn't really a fan of what they did with Jigsaw. Okay. Like, I don't like what's going on with him, and I definitely don't like what he looks like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, said that to, I said that, too, when I saw his face. It's like, oh, man, they just didn't have the budget, bro. You think that's, that's what, what it, it is? Yeah, they I just mean, didn't want to do the makeup for every shot. Like, that's exactly what it had to be, bro. I mean, they could have made it look a little more like horrible yeah like, cause like remember what they did with um 
with Puzzle Share Warzone, right? Like Jigsaw looked jigsaw. messed up. Looked like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. But then they made it more of a mental thing. In like this. Like his his thoughts were scrambled like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. Type thing, instead of the phys- the physical look of him. Before actually seeing the the show, you mm-hmm. know, and I when I saw the trailers, I thought they were do- gonna do like a whole um, Victor Von Doom thing where he had just like a tiny scar in his face. And that's like what drives him to become crazy, because you know how like Victor's like a vain. perfectionist, vain. Yeah, vain, yeah, he's just got like a little tiny scar. Therefore, he needs to cover his own body, the whole body. Yeah, right. <laughs> Talk about overkill, you know. So I thought that's what they were gonna do with um uh, Billy Russo, aka Jigsaw. But no, that's not. It's like his face was a little messed up, but not anything to the extent of the comics yeah. or what we've seen him look before in movies. And I think that's what like disconnected me from him like the fact that he wasn't like a really messed up face i think would have made him more unhinged mm-hmm. but i feel like he still had his looks a little bit um a little cocoa butter could have cleaned that right up oh, you know what man. i mean like i feel like if he was more mangled in the face he would have been a little more unhinged and, Clef's like yo you tripping over this yeah man he's like yo i've i've shaved and gave myself rub, rub bigger a cocoa butter on that yo you good you be good in like six months you be good <laughs> I feel like yeah, like I I just wasn't really feeling the 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 makeup job. Like I I want I really after that beating that he took in season one, yeah, I was expecting him to come out looking like old boy from Warzone. Yeah, bro. Like like the like the like the comic like Jigsaw's supposed to look. Bro, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like when when Frank put his face to that glass <laughs> and kept mushing it back yeah. and forth. Yeah, I thought he was straight up gonna have like. Like like a jigsaw puzzle, yeah. like you said, you know, like straight up mangled up, mm-hmm. and like he, whoever was his surgeon, did a great job. That's all I'm. Oh saying. yeah, yeah. Um, but other than that, how'd you like the villains? Like other than I like, okay, I haven't finished, so I don't want no spoilers, clap. Yeah, yeah. But like, how, what you think of like the side villains and and the side characters so far? I thought that dude, uh, what was his name, John. John something. Yeah, I John, don't. I, I'm not sure. What I can't remember his name. It's John. So he was like the 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 uh, the priest guy. Little Amish looking. Yeah. Um. Villain John there. Pilgrim. Mm. He. Now, do you know him from the comics? He's not from the comics. He's not even. He's an original he's character. An original character made for the show. He's not from the comics. For anybody that didn't want that didn't know that. Um. And I thought he was a great addition. Um, he, he I, has, the actors kill it's dope. Dude, that bro. dude's phenomenal. I've seen him in a <laughs> lot of things. Shout out to the collection and the collector. John Stewart is his uh, Yeah, his John name. Stewart the co- yo, talking about horror movies I like. The collection and the collector. Oh okay. he's the star in those. Okay. Watch those. Those are dope. Yeah, he does his thing in this. Um I don't wanna give you any spoilers of where it's gonna go. Yes. But yeah, he's 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 a badass. Um very very serious he's he's very very serious which makes him very very scary in this in the season i think he was a lot more frightening than jigsaw mm. jigsaw was a little too out there like you know what i mean like he he thought he was tough shit but you know punisher he'll he'll handle him yeah yeah, yeah 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 but so, um so you know what like watching john pilgrim that's his name right mm-hmm. um it reminded me a lot of um the main villain in the cinemax series banshee bro Proctor. Did okay. you ever watch Never Banshee? Never watched that. Oh, Banshee's is, a dope show. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to Banshee, bro. All, all seasons is done. Um, but yeah, yeah, Bill Proctor, I think his name is in the in the show. But yeah, it reminded me a lot because he's like a, a, an Amish too, like head of a mafia type of thing. Yeah. So, I don't know. It just it, that's what I thought of when I was watching this. Yeah. No. I mean, other than that, they're really that, those are really the only two villains in this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Him and Jigsaw and. Like I said, that's my only issue with Jigsaw. But other than that, John Pilgrim was a very, very standout character. In Is it, are we thing. talking ten episodes, Club? Yeah. The, the, that's what Netflix has been doing lately. I don't ten. see because I binge it and I never stop. Yeah, I'm, I'm so pretty, I think there was twelve. Oh, okay. Now, now, if I had to ask you to review it, give us a quick rating for the critics out there. Mm. What would you say that is? I'm definitely giving it a solid three. Okay. Yeah, it's watchable. Um, you get exactly what you expect. Um, they ended it on a note where if Netflix did choose to cancel, it wouldn't hurt. Yeah, bro. So, would you like to see John Benthro back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to see all of those guys back. You know, what I mean, wherever they are, wherever they're gonna end up. But 
Um, I think he's the best iteration of the Punisher that we've gotten. Very this Tom, one, this one is than Thomas Jane. Yeah, this one is very, very to the comic. Very, 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 very to the comic. And that girl, um, Medina. Uh, the, no, the, the, agent, the young the girl, homeless? Amy. Okay. Amy uh, Bendix. She's from the comic. Okay. I actually, got that first appearance by the way. Of course, I'll, I'll be <laughs> clap strikes again. Yeah. Bro. Um, she's from the comic, and her story is pretty much straight, straight. You know, similar. Um, but uh, yeah, I would love to see this because I think he's the best iteration of the Punisher that that we've gotten. Only be- and I love the way that they tie in, like his whole military background, yeah, and how they always pay homage to uh, the veterans and the people who have served, and they focus on that, they take care of that, and I, I appreciate that about the show um, because it-, it it shows who Frank Castle really is, and although he comes off as like this vigilante who doesn't give a fuck and will kill anybody he just he still has his like beliefs and morals and heart for his fellow soldiers and, and things of that so i i admire that about the show yo clep imagine if marvel just like you know if this show eventually gets canceled or whatever mm-hmm. and you know the the character the punisher goes away for a little bit and then he comes back mm-hmm. but in the in the cinematic universe this cosmic ghost rider kid i'm not which is what they've been doing lately yeah and, and you know what shout out to nick because nick has been trying to get me to get into this series for a long time that comic is actually worth a lot of money right now yeah it, they jacked the price up on it he, like you can't even and he has it he's part of the latest uh crew the guardians of, of the galaxy, guardians yeah. Of the galaxy. Yeah, yeah cosmic so the, ghost rider. the first appearance of uh the cosmic ghost rider and everything nick actually i have the first issue thanks to nick because he hooked me up shout out nick um but he has the whole series he's been following it since it dropped so now he's got a, a couple a few gems in his possession Woo. because he's been on this he's been trying to get me to get on i'm i'm very picky when it comes to what 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 characters i want to follow and ghost rider and punisher have never been like my favorite comic books yeah so slap on the wrist to myself i should have you know I should have listened to Nick because he's all about this series. And even uh, the baby Thanos and all of that, that book is worth fucking money right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's dope. You know, yeah. Marvel always keeps it interesting in the, in yeah. the comic book world, you know. Uh, Clep, I'm mm-hmm. so glad that Punisher is, like, getting, you know, a decent review from you because I, I am looking forward to finishing it. Yeah, it's and, good. And I'm hoping, you know, even though the other shows has gotten canceled, I'm hoping this will come back for at least another season. But we'll see, right? Like, I mean, and it doesn't have to come to Netflix. Like, I, I don't care if they put it on a Disney streaming service. I just want to see this continue because the guys that they picked, like Punisher, Cage, I mean, even Rand, he's, he found a spot. You know, like, I think these, these I, when I think of these characters, I think of these people. I don't see anyone else playing these characters. So hopefully they get the, you know, their contracts renewed and we get another go. That's dope. We still got Jessica Jones coming though. Yeah, yeah, probably they'll announce that pretty soon, right? Because yeah. that's how they usually do. They give it a few weeks to gestate, mm-hmm. and then they just drop in the next one, you know? Dude, like, we hey. had so much shit, like, in between. Like, we have uh, we have Captain Marvel, we have yes. Avengers, we yes. have... Spider-Man. Spider-Man, we have, uh, we have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., we have Jessica Jones. Woo! Like, it's... We still have a full fire. year. We yeah. still have a full year. It's going to be fire. Hey, you guys, let me just remind you. If you want to follow us, see what the critics been up to, you should visit the website, wearecritics.com. Yes, sir. Wearecritics.com. Or hit us up on Instagram, We Are Critics, We Are Critics Comics, and We Are Critics Music. Shout out to Wade and uh, Dion. We see you guys. Yeah, yo. And as always, you know, you can find Critics Talk in your favorite podcast app, whether that's on iOS, on Android. We're also on Spotify. Yeah. Man, we everywhere, Podbean, man. and you can even try to find a video or two of us interviewing your favorite celebrities on YouTube. That's Critics TV. YouTube slash Critics TV. Rate, review, subscribe is what they say, right? Yeah, yeah. Share. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Clef, was good with this with the Tusk God, bro. I've oh, been hearing man. some beef rumors, bro. Yo, what's up with Kevin Smith and Bill Maher, bro? How dare he come out, Kevin Smith? Listen, man, Bill Maher, I don't know what the stick up his ass is all about, and I'm gonna talk bluntly about this guy. Do like, it. Like I just like I feel like anybody that's just trying to just tear down the world right now is just an asshole, period. Like, we do this, critics, we do this because it is our escape. You yeah. know what I mean? 
we try hard to avoid the negative news we don't talk gossip we don't talk celebrity gossip we don't talk politics we never talk religion nope. we don't talk about anything that's going to bring people down because we're all about inspiring being creative and being passionate about the shit that we love we're fans baby exactly fans first and that's what fans do fans use these outlets of entertainment and creativity to escape the bullshit and the nonsense last year we lost a great Stan Lee, bro. A great creator, Stan Lee, the man who pretty All much right. pioneered Marvel. He didn't do it alone, just nope. so everybody knows. He didn't do it alone, but he was the front face. He was the man who, you know, did the interviews, who toured, who did the signings, who who hit the Comic Cons hardcore, who did the movie cameos. Passion. Anything bro. anything to he keep lived that life. Anything to keep the Marvel brand alive, this man did it. Through his toughest years, man, yeah, when they were exactly. in the cusp of, of Losing it all, bro. Mm. I remember when I went to get my signature from Stanley at a Comic Con. This guy looked like he was about to fall over the mm-hmm. table. I was there. That's how old he was when he was still touring Comic Cons, sitting in chairs for eight hours Looking at a time. Frail for for fans lined up. It was probably what two hundred people in line waiting More. for him to get signatures. Yeah, man. And he signed every single one of them, and also took a picture with every single person who paid for a picture. So it's like, and he was what ninety two at the time. Yeah. So, to to have a person like Bill Ma talk negative and say things like Stan Lee and Kevin Smith are the reason they they're behind the dumbing down of society because grown ups have a, fact, a, a a fixation with comic books. And in, in, in imagination, which is just a fucking oxymoron. It doesn't even make any sense what he's saying because I'm pretty sure even at his old age, there is something that he holds on to that he had when he was a kid. Yeah, we I think all we do. all do that. Do. Everyone, everyone has a, 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 a thing for nostalgia. You know what I mean? Like whether it's your ba- favorite baseball card, whether it's a baseball you caught on your first ball game with your dad, or someone signed that baseball, or you you have a favorite jersey of your favorite you know ball player. Like that's something from childhood that you bring up as an adult. Even music, bro. Something that you're playing from like your teenage years. Exactly. You know? like, I still do that, bro. I still play stuff like I used to play when I was, you know. Young Migs. I think it's an ignorant statement to say something like comic books are made for kids because it doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Because adults write these books, Preach. which means if you're an adult writing these books, that means there's a little bit of imagination still left inside of you to even write this shit for kids. So this doesn't make any sense to say that comic books are for kids. Comic books are for whoever enjoys the imagination and enjoys reading something because a lot of the material that's being written in these books aren't like a, Very, it's it, mature yeah it's not a b c d one two three kids learn to love your favorite superheroes no these are real stories the only difference between these and novels that are thicker than you know phone books is that there's pictures yeah just because there's pictures doesn't make it for kids not at all. <laughs> like and, and, and like for him to make that statement is just very ignorant and just very close-minded, and I don't know why he's being so salty towards the, the culture of comic books as though he has a personal vendetta. Because last time I remember, he had a cameo that was cut from Iron Man 3. So if He you, was trying to get that money. Exactly. So Talk about hypocrite. If you have a problem with comic books and comic book genre and culture, why are you taking money to do a cameo in one of the biggest Marvel films that ever come out? Like, that doesn't even make any sense. One of the best Marvel films to ever come out. Yeah, let, let's not go there. <laughs> let's not go there. Shout out to Dion. I know he'd be especially mad I said but, that. But, you know, he said what he said, Kevin, and then he uh, ended up going back at Kevin Smith again. Um you know talking about kevin and then kevin came back and said something back to him you know and then referred to he referred to an interview that he had with bill ma a long time ago where he so graciously told him that last time he heard bill ma talking about him he wanted to slap him across the face with his dick whoa (laughs) and he said it in a way where it was like he was joking but he was serious but he was very serious and he's like that's why i lost the weight son because i'm gonna beat you up like he basically (laughs) he basically said it to his face just to see just to pull bill's card and of course bill didn't say anything on live tv by yeah live tv in front of a panel of people it wasn't just him and bill there was two other people there and he said this in front of bill and bill pretty much just kind of changed the subject he didn't come at him if that was me and that was my show me and kevin would have had words live on television like, I'm yo, just Kevin, saying. I see you in the green room, son, and I'm not <laughs> talking about where we smoke the pot. Yeah, but, you know, these celebrities, man, they bark a lot. They bark all the time. They use their platform to bully people and to act tough and big, man. But when you see them in the street or behind the cameras, they're all pussies, and they don't say nothing. Um, and, yep. and that was a situation where Kevin pulled his card, and I'm kind of glad he did. 
And I'm kind of glad he took the high road the second time around because I don't even want to feed into this guy no more because, like I said, we do this to escape. Clep is upset, y'all. Nah, I'm bothered, man. I'm just like, people are just so negative for no fucking reason. Like, dude, do what you do. Stay in your lane. Talk politics. Talk that serious shit. And leave us the fuck out of it because clearly your audience doesn't fuck with our audience and that's just the way it is. That's not even fair to say. Like, his audience probably do fuck with our audience. It's just I mean, he's being ignorant, bro. Yeah, I mean, if he's talking like that, I mean, he fairly clear. He, he clear clearly feels like he can say whatever the fuck he wants and no one's going to care because I don't hear people that watch his show really yeah, complaining real. about what he said. So, you know what I mean? More more of the fans are just like, we don't fuck with you anyways, Bill, so feel how you want to feel. Yeah, he's been a staple yeah. on HBO television for a long time. Yeah, I don't think he's going anywhere. When's the last time honestly? anybody really watched HBO when Game of Thrones was on? Uh, well, I mean, I just watched <laughs> Veneno, <laughs> the, st- the, his- the, 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 the new movie about Jack Veneno, bro. That was fire. Look at bro. that segue. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, bro. Like, I was on HBO last night, and I was surprised that movie was up there. You know, Dominican film. Uh, Spanish, you know, you could watch it with subtitles, but yeah, highly recommended. By the way, it's a story of like one of the greatest Dominican wrestler of all time, bro. Yeah, and you know, this is his origin story, Clap, and also serves as an origin story for his greatest foe. So this is a bro. Story? It was so dope. Or... No, it's based on true story. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm sure they like, you know, they make things you know a little more exciting. Yeah. But it's dope, bro. It's a dope, dope ride, and I highly recommend it. It's and called then- Veneno, the first fall of you know of of the uh, relampago or whatever. That spelled? Uh, V-E-N-E-N-O. V-E-N-E-N-O. Yeah. N-O. Veneno. It's dope, though. Like. Yeah, it's like Venom, but in Spanish. <laughs> oh, my God. No wonder why when I when I searched it, Venom came up. It's dope, though. Yo, shout out to Jack Veneno, bro. You know, one of my childhood, childhood heroes. You know what I mean? Like, the movie takes place in the 50s, 60s, 70s. It's extremely well made. You know, I've watched Dominican films in the past. And, you know, the quality has gotten better throughout the years, but this is... This is, One of, this it's is just special. a solid film all around. Look at the cinematography. Oh, man. it's amazing, bro. And they already, like, at the end of it, they're teasing a sequel, which I'm super excited to see. Because, you know, I'm eventually they're going to have to do that Ric Flair versus Jack Veneno fight, which, yo, if you don't know, epic, yo. Riots broke out, Clep. What? We are back in the day. Yo, they, this is when people thought it was still real, bro. It's still what? real to me, damn it. <laughs> so hold on, so hold on. This guy fights Ric Flair? Yeah, in real life, eventually. He beats Ric Flair. Really? In real life, yeah. He won the NWA, but he didn't get to keep the title. Anyways, I don't want to go back on that, bro. Um, Clep, going back to uh, Kev Smith, bro. I know him and, and Jason Mewes are working on the reboot for Jay and Silent Bob, bro. Yeah, man. I, I'm excited for this because... Production's about to get going like any minute now. Yeah, they had to put production on hold. If you guys remember last year sometime, Kevin Hart suffered from a, a, a severe heart attack and mm-hmm. nearly died um, calmly at that because he didn't know that he had a clogged artery um, until he ended up going to the hospital from from exhaustion during the you know, taping of um, Silent But Deadly, mm-hmm. the HBO special. Was it HBO special? I think it was an HBO special. Um he ended up going to the hospital and then the doctor told him that he had clogged artery and that he was like seconds from having a massive heart attack and dying. Um, yeah, so they put production of the movie on hold. Uh, we had a chance to speak with Brian O'Halloran at one of the Comic Cons and he was telling us, you know, everything had stopped, production had halted, everybody was concerned about Kev's well being and Shout out Brian, bro. Yeah. Super nice guy. Oh yeah, dude. We run into this guy all the time at all the Comic Cons and he's always the same old B. You know what I mean? Yeah, Not yeah. same OG, the same OB, yeah, Brian. No, he's, so, he's an awesome dude all around. I've, I've shared an escalator too and an elevator with this guy. I've, I mean, we've talked to him at his at his panels. Like he he's just a cool dude, man. Um, but yeah, so it's good to see that this is up and running again. I'm excited for this because I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan, and I just like the world of Jay and Silent Bob. It's it's ridiculous. It's silly, but it's an escape. They're great characters. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. they really are. Um, you think how are they gonna pull it off, bro? Cause they are all these days. Well, well, the premise alone is hilarious. Last time I saw Jason Mewes, bro, I was I, I was like, holy crap, these guys are old. <laughs> oh yeah, when we were at the uh, the, the uh, yoga hoses premiere. Yeah, no, I think we seen him after that too, and he looked cre- like 
a little old. I man. thought we saw him in the yoga hose premiere when we were I, walking I down the street. I thought he was at one of the cons too recently. I don't remember seeing him at a con. Mm. But I remember, um, for those who don't remember, like the original Jay and Silent Bob took place where they were, you know, they, they took all of Kevin Smith's movies with them and collectively put them in one movie. And it was about Jay and Silent Bob finding out that a movie was being made about their comic book likeness. Likeness, Blunt Man and, and Chronic. Chronic, and they were going to Hollywood <laughs> to stop this movie from being made. Now this one is going to be about that movie being rebooted, and they don't want oh, the movie to be rebooted. Shot your face! Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, so they're going to Hollywood to stop this movie from being rebooted. I love this shit. I I love when movies like this get meta. Honestly, and I think he just you sold me on that one. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear, folks. Migs's ticket is sold. <laughs> I like I like that when directors get meta and, and, and make fun of the genre within the genre. Um, Wes Craven was known for doing that with Scream, mm-hmm. um, which Jay and Silent Bob have a cameo in Scream, and even in uh, but, one of that, the right? one of the yep, and he even in in. It was a dream, dream, the the freaking Wes Craven. New uh, Nightmare. New Nightmare, oh, yeah. They started with like a dude, whole meta thing where they're making favorite. a movie of Freddy. That's and my like, favorite Freddy. Bro, it's so dope. That's my favorite Nightmare on Street movie. New Nightmare is brilliant. Yeah. Where he had Freddy haunting the actual actors yeah. of the original Nightmare it's on Street. It's so dope, bro. Dude, like who thinks of that shit? Like that's. That's crazy. So yeah, to see Jay and Silent Bob come back to Hollywood to stop a reboot because we know we're in a reboot time now. Yeah, it happens all the time. Everything is being rebooted. Let's make a re a TV show of this old movie <laughs> that used to be a TV show. So what? I think this is gonna be great. I think he's gonna pull all his favorites. He's gonna bring everybody back. We're gonna see Affleck. We're gonna see Brody. We're gonna see all this characters. Are we gonna see Dante? No. <laughs> well, yeah, we're definitely gonna see Dante. I thought he quit. No, Dante didn't quit. Um. Uh, Randall quit. Oh, okay. But I still have hope. I feel like Randall will come back. Even though he doesn't, he's not really into acting. Uh, Randall's the other guy from Clerks. You know, the the bit, the loudmouth. Yeah, he, yeah. He I thought he wanted back. nothing to do with this, the lifestyle yeah, no man. more. I know it sucks, man. Because it's good when all of Kevin's characters come back, man. I, I like that. Hopefully, Chris Rock will come back. Yo, that'd be dope. I'm ha- <laughs> I'm happy, yo. Shakalula King. Yo, we're a <laughs> huge fan of Kevin Smith. If you didn't know, you know, we love his films. Yeah. Um, he's been doing a lot of work with like the DC uh, Arrowverse, you know. Like he's been oh, yeah. directing uh, at least an episode a year for a few years now, and uh, those turned out to be some of my favorite episodes of the season. So you know, shout out to him. Yeah. So right now, there's only three people signed on, and that's uh, Kevin, Jay, and Brian. Brian, who plays Dante, same OB. Which is really what you. I mean, as long as you have the cast of Clerks, you you're good because that's where it all started. Mm-hmm. I mean, no one really remembers any of the other. Like, characters unless it's like dogma but yeah but yeah he's good yo club let's talk about another sequel that's in the works brother mm. yo you know that detective pikachu movie that's about to come out any minute now yeah, starting man. uh is it justice smith yeah 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 and, justice uh, smith and ryan reynolds and ryan reynolds as, as pikachu which is weird as hell to me brother this movie must be doing like whoever seen it must love it because the studio mm-hmm it's already fast tracking a sequel, which is crazy because the movie's not even out. When is it supposed to be, re- be released? This Bob? is coming out this year, May, May tenth, as a matter of fact. That's, that's around the corner. Yeah, that's like that's uh that's Avengers territory. Yeah, right after Avengers, luckily after, mm-hmm. and not during. Luckily, yeah, right. Uh, luckily after, not during, because I'm telling you, when Avengers Endgame drops, Just noth- move, move nothing's out the making money. Nothing's making money. That might even be bad territory. Mm. May tenth is kind of close to the end of April. Mm. Avengers is sweeping the month it's in and the month after. Yo, but I always believe there's money yet to be made for everybody out here. So if this movie's great, people will see it. And it sounds like this movie is great. You know what it is? I think Avengers is going to help this movie, if anything, because that's going to be month of the geek. Mm. Like, they're going to all be like, Amp, oh, we saw Avengers. Now we got to go see Detective Pikachu. Bro, yeah. live action Pokemon? That's yeah. going to be huge, bro. Yeah, it's going to be a good month. There's a lot of people my age that grew up with Pokemon. Mm. There are huge fans to this day, bro, that got them them Poke cards hidden, bro. Talk about <laughs> nostalgia you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Bro. I know they still got, like, 
a, a shiny Mewtwo card hidden underneath their bed or and, something. And, think it's gonna be worth money. And I'm talking day. about comics being expensive, guys. If you don't know nothing about Pokemon cards and the value of certain cards, for real, there are cards out there that are well worth over a grand. Yo, a grand. Best thing. No corners bent. Holographic, sealed in the package. Worth a grand or more. Yo, Clep, are you excited for this Detective Pikachu I'm film? Not, I'm not going to lie. I'm in there. I'm going to check it out. Um, I was never really a Pokemon fan. I was right, right after my era. Was right, right on the cusp. I think I was just just a senior. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. Um, so, but I'm familiar. And Ryan Reynolds is always a win for me. So I'm definitely going to check it out just to see. Because I know this is from the video game. And I never played the video game. Yeah, yeah. No, this is so, a whole different video game actually detective pikachu was like that super nintendo or what was that um i think it's game boy game Boy. yeah like okay. ds or something you yeah. know how they do yeah oh yeah yeah put the, the I, re- I remember that the uh the pokemon games are big on on game boy yeah huge. um but yeah I'm, I'm definitely gonna be in there to check it out because i know i know it's gonna bring something i probably won't get all the easter eggs and all the no no but no. i'll pay attention to the crowd because i know people will be like oh, oh especially when they see charizard yeah, yeah all that all shit the major bulbasaur yeah, yeah. Uh, Squirtle, you know, like, bro, they got the classic <laughs> characters, bro. Classic characters. I know some of you could probably name a one original one fifty because you guys were die hard back then. I know Mark D is a fan. Yo, Mark D will probably sing you the song right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? He'll he'll go into the whole theme, bro. Yeah. But like, yo, since this movie's getting fast tracked, it's probably gonna be out in twenty twenty or so, Clef. And that's how sequels should be. I hate when they take that year off. Because mm-hmm. sometimes you kind of disconnect with it. Um, that's how I, I was kind of upset with uh, Kick-Ass when they did that. They took a three-year break yeah, before was, they did the sequel. Sometimes it's not, it's not beneficial. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they should. sequels should come out every year. They should be on it. So if they fast-track and this comes out in 2020, Club, mm. 2020 is going to be a great year. Because you know what else is coming out then? Bad Boys. Bad boys, right? Yeah. Not only that, but we getting that long awaited. Mm-hmm. We talked about it last week. Ghostbusters 3, oh, yeah. July 2020. Sony just released a date, bro. I think they said July 18th. Whoa. They're serious about this. And they're saying untitled Ghostbusters project. And I, I don't know. You know, I really hope they get really. Uh, they just say fuck it and go balls to the wall with this thing because. I remember Bill Murray saying that the only way, only way he would come back is if he could come back as a ghost. Mm. So, let's go there. I think he's coming back to Zombie Land, bro. He is coming back to Zombie. It's already confirmed. Is he gonna be a ghost? I don't know, but it's already confirmed he's coming back, bro. I'm about to write. I'm about to write a movie and write in Bill Murray as a ghost. See if he comes and shoots it. <laughs> just, to, just to try it. He's like, bro, I got the script. Guess what? You're a ghost. Are you down? He's gonna be like, yeah, makes, let's do it. So here's the thing. Here's 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 though. some of my predictions. They're not gonna just stick with the original Ghostbuster cast. Okay. They're gonna definitely add some new people to the this. The new class, like they did with the video, or not the cartoons back in the day. Remember the yep. new Ghostbusters? Yeah. So who, if you could bring in a new class, who would you bring in? Like actor wise? Yeah. A new class. Um, I think I would. Not as go- replacements, but it's just. I would love to see an addition. I want to go young with it, so I want to see a Tom Holland there. Really? Yes, that's that will be dope. That's blockbuster. Um, right there. Let's see. I want like a, a young face too. So maybe um, Anya Taylor Thomas. What is that her name? Anya from a female. From um, she we recently just seen her in, 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 in Glass. glass yeah. So maybe her. Okay. Um, you know, I've yet to see her in comedies, but I'm I'm thinking that maybe after the X Men movie, New Class coming mm-hmm, out, mm-hmm. Um, she might be in there. Um, I, I would like to see maybe Macy Williams, right? She's going to be fresh of Game of Thrones. She plays Arya. Okay. You know, um, I want to see a diverse cast. So maybe, uh, you know, let's throw some black Latinos, some, some black people in there, bro. It would be great. You, you know, know what? You know what else I would like to see? Who? Did you hear about the controversy between the the, re- the reboot cast and this? Well, I know Leslie from SNL. She was tight. She's the, like, "Yo, this is a slap in the face." The director also spoke too. What? What? Paul, what she Paul, said? Was it Paul? Fagan? Paul Feig? Was he the one that he did the? Uh, what he said? Um, I didn't really get into it, but it's pretty much the same thing that she said. Everyone's feeling like it's a slap in the face, like they don't count. I'm sorry, like it wasn't not, a success. It's not. It's not even that. It's not even about the success. It wasn't a success because of how people feel about the original. 
they say that it feels like they don't matter. But if you think about it, it feels like the original doesn't matter. Like, you guys just took it upon yourself to just go out and make another fucking Ghostbusters because, what, you don't give a fuck about the original? If anything, you should have paid more of a homage mm-hmm. and connected those universes. Even if it was an alternate universe. That would have been the right thing to do, And that, there's still room for that. That's cool. If they could do, like, an alternate universe and then include them both into one film, that would be huge because then it would drive more sales for that reboot because people would then want to go see it, and then they'll still pay homage to the original. Because they put all the original Ghostbusters in the reboot. They just didn't play who they were supposed to be. Which is super weird. Why yeah. would you even bring them back in that they, case? They were all in it, all the way down to a bust that's in the background of Egon. Yeah, it's wild. You know what I mean? There's a, a head statue of Egon in the background. And, and just it. wild. So I think that if the new Ghostbusters, well, the new old Ghostbusters comes back, they should play around with alternate universes. Clef, who do you want to see in this movie? Um, I thought about it years ago. Oh. But my, my Damn. My, <laughs> yeah, my casting by Clef. Yeah, I casted like when it, when I heard the reboot was coming. Um, but these guys are probably too old now. I would I wanted to see Rogan's camp. Rogan? Seth. So Seth. Seth Rogan's whole camp. James Franco. All of them. All of them. Oh. Like I thought they would have been perfect new class for Ghostbusters. Jonah Hill? All of them. Bro, actually, now that you say Jonah Hill in a Ghostbusters movie. All of them. Even I, Channing Tatum, All bro. of them, dude. Even fucking, what's his name? The little whiny one. The little, I can't remember his name. He used to, oh, just Michael Sarah. Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> we haven't seen him in a while, bro. Yeah, like, let's I, bring Michael back. There was a time where I thought that that entire camp could, read, could be the new class completely. Mm. And it would have been worth it. Mm, like you're worth right. it, and they might have missed their, their yeah, chance. Yeah, yeah, it's this. too late now. It's too late. There, there aren't any more camps that are bringing it like Rogan's camp. Hey, listen, there's another major comeback slated for 2020, brother. I'm talking about Christopher Nolan, the god, the film god. He's coming back with his newest film in 2020, untitled. We don't have any details. But you know how it is, bro. When Sin Copy, which is this production mm-hmm. um, production company, um, announces that there's going to be a film coming out, it's usually a big deal, and they're already touting it. It's like it's going to be just that. So, listen, if you think about it, the last few movies, what was it? Um, we had Dunkirk, which, shout out Wade. I know he loves this movie. He's uh that was huge and it's one of those movies that like there's not much in like story wise going on but the movie just doesn't let up and it's just great all around um and of course we know him from the Batman franchise all the way from you know Batman Begins The Dark Knight The Dark Knight Rises awesome films awesome films let's not even forget about films like um Yo Clep what's that movie with um Inter- intergalactic bro intergalactic does that interstellar bro freaking yo nolan bro yo like that's why they're making such a big deal they're just announcing it without knowing anything about it and this is a huge comeback for him anyways because i mean you dunkirk know, was fucking ridiculous yeah 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 it was huge huge and he got snubbed too last year right he always gets snubbed bro yeah. like he gets usually no love i thought for sure he was gonna get that and um I was kind of disappointed that he did it. Yo, brother, let's talk about another director that usually doesn't get the respect and love that I feel he deserves. Who's that? I'm talking about Quentin Tarantino, brother. Tarantino. He's coming back. His newest film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. New Images just came out for this, club. Yes. The cast on this, I mean, we said it before. Ridiculous. We're talking Leonardo DiCaprio, that is. I, didn't, I don't even think I needed to say the last thing. Everybody knows. <laughs> Just say Leo. About. Yo, Leo. We talking about um Brad Pitt. We talking about Margot Ro- Robbie. We talking about Dakota Fanning. Bro, Dakota. Al Pacino. Yo, Kurt the Russell. Who, who? The who's who of Hollywood? Tim Roth. Yo, what's up with them pictures, Clep? Yeah, they all look epic as f. And I, I mean, honestly, dude, like, and I, we were talking about this earlier, man. Period pieces, man. Quentin Tarantino knows how to do a period piece. And you look at this, and you kind of get a gist of what time period it it's is. It's the '60s. It's Summer of Love '69. Yeah. You know? It's it's based in the summer when freaking Charles Manson's on the loose. Yeah. 
And I think I don't think he's like the main focus of the story, but Probably he's like a definitely background, in the movie. Background character, yeah. Type deal, which is cool because it kind of sets the tone when you can do that. When you can take something that big of its period and just kind of throw it in the background. Mm-hmm. That's never, I've never seen that done before. And if you think about it, bro, like that year, 69, 68, whatever, such an interesting year in American history because this is we're in the midst of, of Vietnam War, you know what I mm. mean? Like, shit is crazy. Like, the hippie movement is heavy going on, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and then Charles Manson's on the loose. Yeah. Bro, it's crazy, you know? There's still civil rights stuff going on. Like, yo, I'm super excited for this. And like I said, Quentin Tarantino doesn't always get the, the love he deserves, but I'm here to shout him out, yo. And shout out Pulp Fiction. This shout gonna, out Reservoir This is going to be a, a summer release, so it's going to be around the time that Spider-Man's out. Uh, actually, the end of July, so kind of like mid-summer this is coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's going to be a big deal, man. It's I, gonna be, so. I just, You know what I hope? I, I hope it's not like they did with, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, <sighs> Eightful Eight? Yeah, well, it was like limited release, man. What's up with that, man? Like Because he was doing this whole thing with the... Um, 70 millimeter yeah yeah it was the, seven oh, yeah, a lot it of was, theaters yeah like it. there was only there's only like 50 theaters in the whole country that has probably more now but like not a lot of theaters have the 70 millimeters and like he wanted to show that off first and then there's eventually came out to like the regular 30 i don't remember i don't stuff. recall it ever coming to like it did no i believe it did i believe it did i know Mark i saw D's a 70 millimeter yeah, kit because i'm about that life yeah you know Mark what D's i mean? saw the 70 millimeter i need too. to see that yo hatefully yo in theaters such a wonderful experience yeah but i'm excited about this i just like i i appreciate the set design the production value of this shit this movie um it looks great the cast is gonna be great it's it's definitely a must see so. Clep, let's talk about Oscar nominations, brother, because oh, we season. just got the list. Tis the and, season. I mean, I'm not surprised about it because Disney made a huge push, but Black Panther, bro, coming out swinging. Seven nominations, I think. Something like that. Crazy. Best film. Best picture. Yeah, I, I'm really, really shocked. I'm not shocked. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not shocked that it's nominated. I'm shocked. Yeah, I am shocked. I'm shocked that they let him in. Yeah. <laughs> What's what what are the, um, what is the what else it's on the best picture club? So we got Black Panther, Black yeah. Klansman, which is another one that I'm shocked about. Yeah, bro. Shout um, out um Spike Lee. Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Green Book, which is great. Yeah, Mark D loves that film. Um Roma. Yeah, that, that's the Alfonso Cuarón Netflix original. Star is Born, which is very tough contender. Mm-hmm. And then Vice. The Vice, yeah. I feel like A Star is Born is going to get snubbed because there's so many of those movies. And it always used to win. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that the Academy feels like it's fair to kind of give it. It's fair to put it in there, but it's not fair to give it to them, even though it deserves it because it was done well. Um, Isn't Bohemian Rhapsody probably the the favorite? They just won for the I, Golden I'll Globe. I'll be right? very pissed if Bohemian Rhapsody wins because I don't think it deserves a win. I don't think it deserves a win. Um, I can see the favorite winning. That's that Emma Stone, um, Rachel Weisz movie, or even a Green Book. Green Book. I can see Roma, bro. People love Alfonso Cuarón. Yeah. So yeah, I can see Roma going. All I the feel way. like if if Black Panther doesn't take it, which we know it won't. Um, if Black Panther doesn't take it, then I want Green Book to take it. Let's talk about lead actor, bro. Who, mm-hmm. What? What's? Who's nominated? I see Christian Bale, Rami Malek for Bohemian Rhapsody, Bradley uh, Cooper. I, I would say, out of this, I want Christian Bale to win that because of his transformation. Yeah. Oh, bro, like just insane. that alone. It's insane. But like, um, William Dafoe's in this too. And uh, Vigo Mortensen for Green Book, so like, it's it's a tough competition. Yeah, this year is gonna be great. Um, I think that it's gonna be worth the watch just just for the anxiety, mm-hmm. <laughs> because you just don't know who's gonna win. I honestly do feel like for lead actress, it's gonna be between Lady Gaga, Glenn Close. Bro, she's a beast, Glenn Close, right? I, I really do. Glenn Close is nominated for the wife. Um, I really think it's going to be between her and Lady Gaga. And 
if Lady Gaga wins, it's clearly for her voice and not her performance. Yo, Melissa McCarthy getting nominated? Yeah, that movie. I, you know, I gotta watch that movie because it looks phenomenal. I want to watch that movie. We've been talking about this. Though. Can you can you ever forgive me? Yeah. About the lady who plagiarized, mm-hmm. like, you know, some book writings and shit like that. And I've been dying to see that. I I have to catch up on all the Oscar knobs before the Oscars happens, anyways, just so I can be be there with a clear mind and say who I think really should win. Yo, Clep, I want to quick send a quick shout out to. To top dog Kendrick Lamar getting that best original song, him and ZZA for mm. all of the stars. Yo, Black was, Panther coming out hard, bro. I think that's gonna win. I think so too, bro. I think that's gonna win. Hip hop usually has a, a good run when it comes to these Oscar nominations. Oh, yeah, when and when Jalon they Jalon get Jalon nominated, Jalon. they tend to win, bro. Eminem, Three Six Mafia. You know what I mean? Like, there's been a history of of hip hop taking it big. In common. Yeah. Um, I think All the Stars was a great fucking song it dude. still is it holds up great every time when i first heard that song literally put me in the mood in the tone of the movie goosebumps like, this is what the movie is going to feel like i thought that that song was just perfect um yo listen look at the nominations for black panther this is crazy dude they're literally in everything shout out marvel and disney for i'm kind of upset that they're out here pushing hard for these movies i'm kind of something. upset that uh avengers didn't get anything no 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 that they didn't give michael b supporting actor he got that snub kid like it he happens. should have got that it happens you know um it happens spider verse is definitely taking animation Again. Mm, what else is it going against? Incredibles 2. Isle That's of, huge. It wasn't good, though. Nobody really liked it. No? Um, Isle of Dogs was slept on. Ralph breaks the end in it? Not going to do well. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, Into the Spider-Verse is taking that. They took it at the Golden Globe, so I don't I don't see why they wouldn't take it. Listen, the Oscars, February 28th, mm. right? We be on the lookout for it. So, you know, you guys should, too. No. What do you mean, no? Is that the date? No. Yeah, Feb 28th, last Sunday of uh, February. You got it. Yeah, bro, I know these things. Oh, the 24th? See that? Right, see, see that's, that? wh- that's why we check these things, the, people. The 91st Academy Awards will, pr- will premiere on Sunday, February 24th, 2019. Whoa. I'm excited. You excited? I'm really excited because, like I said, this is one. This is a nail-biter. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is not one of those ones where you're going to go in and watch and be like, who you think's gonna win is gonna win. I mean, sound editing, sound mixing, production design. Black Panther's taking that. Production design, Black Panther's taking that. Yo. I'm telling you right now, Black Panther is taking at least two home. At I, least. I like to see it. There's no way that it's not gonna win the music. There's no way it's not gonna win production design. If it, if it, look what it's up against. Mary Poppins, First Man, the favorite in Roma for production design. What movie looks better than Black Panther in 2018? I haven't seen those other ones, Clap, so but, I can't. But what movie looks better than Black Panther in 2018? Yo, I feel like if I don't say Black Panther, Clep is going to try to fight me I'm right now. Saying, so I'm just going to say Black Panther. I'm not even a huge Black Panther movie fan. It was mediocre to me in the sense of Marvel films. Not as an overall film, but you cannot argue that this movie doesn't look beautiful. Oh, it looks great. The only thing that could beat Black Panther in that in that is would be Aquaman. Yeah, and I don't think it's in there. It's not. It's not. Yeah. I mean, there's not one DC movie in Yo, there. Yo, shout out Aquaman becoming the highest grossing DC movie. That's that's insane. That is insane. Bigger than Superman. Bigger than Batman. Bigger than Superman. Bigger than Wonder Woman. Bigger than BBS. Yes. That's crazy. Yo, and James Wan super happy about <laughs> it. Although he already said it. Yo, if that script doesn't look right for the sequel, I ain't coming back. Oh, he said that. Yo, nice. He said nice. it needs to be a pearl. Otherwise, they're on their own. Costume design, Black Panther. You don't think they're gonna take it? Yo, yes, clap. Don't fight me on it. Yeah. Visual effects, though, went straight to Avengers. Mm, yeah, because, hey, Thanos looked the real. Uh, but it's up against Ready Player One. That's a tough one because those tough. characters looked amazing, too. Yeah. Especially if you're lucky enough to watch that film in 4K like I did recently. Mm. Holy crap, bro. That movie pops. This looks like it's going to be a fairly short show. It's not, not that many. Clep, let's bring. I want to talk about an update. From last week, we were talking about the Sopranos film mm. moving forward, prequel film, and we were speculating whether Tony Soprano was gonna be in it or not. Mm-hmm. And we have the answer, Clep. Mm-hmm. HBO has announced that Michael Galdolfini, son of 
James. Le- legendary James Gandolfini, bro. Mm-hmm. It's gonna play his, his father's character, right? He's gonna be playing Tony Soprano as a young kid, bro. How, does that not give you feels? Because it gives me feels. It does. I think that's that's awesome. Um, I mean, he he looks like yeah, him. He looks like he him, looks bro. like a young Tony Soprano. He does look like a young Tony. Like straight up. Shout out HBO, man. And I've never seen this kid in anything else. I don't know if he's an actor or anything of that nature. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what happens. For sure. And like that, now that answers our question too, because we were talking about timeline. We're talking about possible characters that might be in the film. And now it has to kind of circle around Junior, right? Uncle Junior, his heyday, let right? Me take the, let me take that back. This kid has actually done some shit. Oh, he's been he's been around? He was in Ocean's 8. Okay. Uh, he was also in something called The Flower, and he was also in Deuces. Or Deuce, I'm sorry, The Deuce. The Deuce, yeah, that's a HBO show. So He's got some fans over there. At HBO, I mean. So, the Many Saints of Newark is in pre-production right now. That's what he's up he's up working with. The Boy, the Dog, and the Clown, he's in that. That's coming up in 2019 as well. Um, he doesn't have a lot of stuff, but he, you know, I mean, he's he's working. This is going to be a great look for him. Yeah, he's working. Especially if he kills it. You know, Tony Soprano is one of those beloved TV characters. Oh, that's a great show. Great show. I, hey, I said it last week. One of the greatest TV shows of all time. Don't mm. sleep on it. Yeah. Yo, Clef, let's talk about a uh, 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 trash can of fire right now. We're talking about the fire film, not film, music festival that Ja Rule oh, and some random dude try to put together and con people out of tons of money back in the day. Dude, this this thing, oh my God, such a shit show. Um, Just this last week, right, we got not one, but two documentaries. Same time. That went about, you know... You know, talking about what the hell actually happened, right? Yeah. Netflix and Hulu, both of them dropped their own document, you know, series of events. The fire fraud, it's on Hulu, and fire is on Netflix. Now, shout out to Reluctant Movie Buff, who reviewed these films for us. Clap, do you have a chance to watch one of these, or both? Yeah, it's, um, shout out, again, shout out to Reluctant Movie Buff, Can We Talk Podcast. You guys should check him out. Uh, he does his thing weekly just like we do. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he took the time to review both of these for us. Um, in one review, you guys can go to wearecritics.com, check out uh, The Fire, two-in-one review. Uh, one, one, one was given a three, the other was given a three X. Now, the funny thing is I kind of disagreed with uh, Reluctant Movie Buff, but he makes great points on... Um, on 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 his decision and, and his ratings, and we so, stand by it. So so definitely check that out. Um, I liked I liked them both overall, but for me the Hulu one gave more more insight on the psyche behind the behavior and uh, the man Billy, who selfishly and crazily like did this horrific thing to people like it was crazy yo clip because i'm not super familiar Mm -hmm. with this can you like break it down to me like what at fire music festival actually was supposed to be and what ended up being so basically fire the fire festival was supposed to be um the new coachella okay um basically millennial driven new lifestyle type of uh, f- music festival. Um, it wasn't. It, it was more or less about who was going to be there, rather than wanting to be there to see things. You know, you had to be. You had. It made you feel like you were somebody to be there. So, so if you weren't going, you had a serious case of the FOMO, right? Fear of missing out, or or, or fear of money, fear of not having the money. <laughs> oh shoot! Because people like spend tons of money to go so, this, right? So it was a great idea gone bad, and instead of being honest and upfront about all of its shortcomings, Billy McFarlane. Uh, Why is Ja Rule attached to this? So clip? so here's how how's how here's how it went down, right? So this guy Billy McFarlane, he he was a, a credit card mogul. He was a young guy who was in his early twenties. Came up with an idea to uh, uh, come up with an exclusive credit card yes. for, for millennials, young young adults, and he got an investor who helped him do it. Um, after a while, he was coming up, you know, money money was was shortening. His investor passed away. Not sorry, he didn't pass away. He went to jail. Yeah, yeah. He went he um he went to jail, and then now he had to figure out a way to you know 
keep this thing going. Yeah, yeah, keep the so lifestyle. So along his ways of having celebrities help him push this credit card, he became friends with Ja Rule. Ba- yeah. What would I be without yeah, so you? So Ja Rule, he sold Ja Rule on this idea. They were trying to figure out how they were going to make some money. So they came up with an idea and like, let's do a music festival. Cool. All right. Whatever an idea. Somehow, some way, this kid Billy was always able to get funds, always able to get money because what he would do, what he would sell ideas and sell dreams to potential investors, and 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 promise a, a crazy return. Mm-hmm. He already had like a successful thing kind of going on, so you can see how they probably wouldn't even question him and be like, "All right, whatever, well, here's a check." And he yeah. had famous friends to like back exactly. up the claim. Yeah, exactly. So he sells Ja Rule on this idea. Now, at this point, Ja Rule is just a celebrity who's being compensated by staying close and showing up on camera. Right. He's just endorsing this whole Now, thing. this is like in the heights of Ja Rule era no, or past no, his prime? This is, this is past this his is prime. This is past his prime. This is after 50 destroyed his career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is after his prime, but, you know, he's still Ja Rule. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So um, they, they go about making this thing happen. Now, this kid has great ideas. He goes out and he finds a way to put money down on an island, an island that's in seclusion, and it is Pablo Escobar's home island. What? Yeah, so the initial promo is exclusive on, on an island formerly owned by Pablo Escobar. That sounds epic already. Already. So I remember seeing this on I- IG. And, and you was, wanted to go back I then? I was like, oh, that's dope. Even Wade. Wade would tell you. We were like, oh, we've seen this fire shit. We, we thought about it. We, we thought it was a dope thing because it was right around the time when Coachella was like the big Blowing thing. up, yeah. So one thing that he didn't tell people was that Brad, uh, Billy was not, when he put the money down on the island, one of the one of the main terms was that he could not promote that it was Pablo Escobar's house. Mm. So after that, all shit hit the fan because after they promoted it, they lost the island. So now they didn't have a place to have an event. Yo, Cleb, the this sounds super interesting, and I'm going to recommend the critics to go <laughs> and watch either both or one of these, like, docs. Because, yo, this story sounds yeah, just it, unbelievable. And I'm going to leave it at that because I feel like there's so much more that people need to watch and pay attention to. Because me as a former, like, concert promoter, like, I've done concerts. I've had partners, my partner, shout out to Cash. We, we used to do concerts all the time in many places, in Mass, in D.C., in, in Houston. And it, we would always say that it doesn't matter how much money you have, this business isn't for everyone. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck if you're a millionaire. If you don't know how to execute a concert, you will, what happened at FIRE will happen to you. So it... It doesn't matter, man. People think voice of experience, need, oh, man. People think all you need is the bread, and you know they're gonna come. I'm so mm-hmm. glad you're here to give the critics your point of view because you yeah. you know firsthand, bro. Yeah, it's crazy, man. But it's a great it's a great uh, document. Both of them are very very great. There's conflict, a little bit of conflict of interest. My reason I like Hulu better is because I feel like it gets in the whole psyche of the millennial, you know, generation and you know how these the, the way of that thinking could lead to something like this. Whereas Netflix is a little more vain, like it's it's a little more brushed over, because the same producers of the Netflix one are the same producers who promoted the fire the festival. Fire festival. Hmm, sounds shady. Which is uh, anybody that knows fuck Jerry Media, they're all over Instagram. They're they're a media company that helps promote uh, events via social media. Um, they produce the Netflix one. And the Hulu one is actually a live interview with Billy McFarlane. So that's another reason why I like the Hulu one versus the Netflix one. That's dope, Clep. So That's dope. I'm going to put it on my queue, bro. Yeah, definitely check them out. Hey, Clep, before we go, I just want to touch real quick on The Passage, bro. Holy oh, crap. Oh, shit. This TV show, I said I wasn't going to continue oh, watching, man. Clep, but I found myself bored, and I watched the second episode, and I had to eat shit, bro, because it was so damn good. Yeah, the passage. And now there's no way I'm not going to watch this week to week. Holy crap, yo. Shout out to Mark Paul Glazo. Gosler. Gosler. Bro, <laughs> homie Sack Morris, he's awesome in Preppy? this. Preppy? <laughs> yeah. Yo, he is awesome in this. Amy Belafonte, man. Yo, she's awesome in this. And their relationship, bro, The like... It just works. They have yeah. chemistry, bro. Yeah. They have I, chemistry. I hate that I have to wait week to week to watch the show because I was watching it. 
I kind of skipped the last week's episode by accident, and mm-hmm. I watched it on demand. And then I saw that they had the the next episode, and I was like, I clicked on it in hopes that it would be there. And it was it, just a preview. Yeah, it wasn't even there, <laughs> man. I was like, shit, got like, em. Yeah, the show is great. It, I'm not really big on sci-fi, but this is definitely uh, drama, real drama driven. A lot of action. Yes. Um, sci-fi included. I don't even like vampires, but this shit is. It's it's differing enough. Yeah. Like it, I. Okay, it's not vampires as you think Virals. of vampires. Virals. It's yeah, it's not even just like just we watch the we show. We haven't even gotten a chance to see them no, in action. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like they're like very psychological. Yeah. I can't like everything is super Two interesting. Two episodes in and you've got enough. Dialogue enough. clap. It's yeah. just so like real life dialogue. It doesn't mm. feel like going around or like just just making it trying to make it sound fancy for TV. It just mm. felt very real and I and I love that. I just want to say like shout out to Mark Paul Gosler because growing up on Saved by the Bell, you know these child stars they're here one day, they're gone tomorrow. You never hear from them ever again. It's good to see him in something that's like really yeah. respectable prime time yeah. on a major network. Um we just hope that Fox treats him well. I mean sooner or later they're gonna be owned by Disney so I'm sure it'll be around long because there's a child involved. Um, <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I just think I just I just think he's doing a great job on this show. It's a great show. Um, Matt Reeves, mm. Ridley Scott, mm-hmm. they're doing their thing. Yeah, and this is a series of books too, by the way, guys. Yeah. Like this, this is there's a three three book series of this. If you guys, for you readers out there who want to go check this out beforehand, you know what I mean. Although Bill Maher might be mad at you because you're like reading fiction and shit yeah it's not a comic book it's an actual novel book but he's like oh vampires really grown ass men grown women reading about (laughs) vampires anyways yo that's the show clip that's all i have for the critics out there as always you know you can follow us and we are critics across social media you know what i mean clap bro thank you for everything oh no problem man you know what i mean um are we out? Yeah, leave him leave with a little something. All right, man. As always, we want you guys to make sure you wake up, create, be passionate. And repeat? Repeat? Crazy stop. Yeah. We out. <laughs>